Hey guys, welcome back to the Buzz Weaver channel. And in our follow-up to the Chinese spy balloon from the hill, Beijing confirms balloon is Chinese, says entry into U.S. airspace was unintended. Beijing confirmed on Friday that a high-altitude balloon traveling over the northern U.S. is Chinese and said its entry into American airspace was unintentional. A spokesperson of the Chinese Foreign Ministry said in a statement, that the balloon is a civilian airship used primarily for meteorological research. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't need to remind you that we're living in 2023. And even a country like China should have the same sorts of charts and graphs and predictions and use smaller weather balloons and other devices that many meteorologists use throughout the world to measure or use instrumentation to determine weather patterns, and other such conditions. Now, I don't claim to be a meteorologist, although on the news, they are, or at least here in Atlanta, the news often likes to uh, tout a lot of their very fancy gear and equipment, which doesn't require something the size of three buses to conduct meteorological studies. Affected by the westerlies and with limited self-steering capability, the airship deviated far from its planned course, the spokesperson said. The Chinese side regrets the unintended entry of the airship into the air into U.S. airspace due to force uh, uh, major, or uh, is the French way of saying it. I was trying to say it the way they do. Is I think it's force major or something to that effect. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you not find it ironic? Now, I'm not going to speculate on this. I'm just going to go based upon their wording. Of course, we already know that China violates uh, foreign nations and sovereign countries' airspace quite often, as well as the Russians. So I find it particularly interesting also that if it's a meteorological balloon, would it have not have been a point of interest to the meteorologists in China that perhaps sending this balloon at a certain altitude in a certain position would then blow it towards the United States or potentially blow it towards the United States thousands upon thousands of miles away? And what was the determination of the balloon's time period in the air. Could it not be adjusted? Could it not be set for a certain distance and time? It's really fascinating all the particular questions that arise from this. Now, I can understand that here in the United States, the military is concerned about its size and doing something towards it, uh, causing damage and debris fall into the United States. Now, I am not sure how they would calculate all that or determine how they would capture it. I just find it fascinating that the amount of money that we spend on air defense in the United States, that this either wasn't caught earlier or seen coming towards the United States, especially when it's the size of three buses. So I find it quite fascinating because if we go here to the uh, Daily Mail UK, you can kind of see the trajectory of the route of the Chinese spy balloon. Pentagon says there are 450 missile silos in the United States with 400 missiles that can that can be deployed at any time. Okay, for what re for what? What are they going to use them for? Other missiles? Uh and not and not balloons or other devices or craft from foreign countries that could be sending these over here. I'm sure the CCP is incredibly delighted that they're able to agitate the United States this way, because they do it all the time in Taiwan, as we covered here on the channel, and as we have been covering on the channel for several years, China's incursions and behaviors and antagonizing, essentially poking the bear. And then, of course, if a nation responds or a country responds in some particular way, they want to feign victimhood and pretend as though they were simply doing one thing or another. Now, it's quite possible that it's a weather balloon, but... Does this not speak to what would be the incompetence of the meteorologist or scientist that can't determine? Here you are trying to determine weather with a balloon, but not factoring in the wind conditions and the potential for it to be blown off course. And how long is it going to be in the air? And for what purposes and for what distances is it designed for? So none of that was considered. I mean, I'm not an engineer. I, I'm, my father is an aer aerospace engineer. Maybe he could chime in. But... Just, these are just basic common sense things that people would ask, you know, not to mention the fact of what sort of uh, message does this send to Russia as well? Seeing that, uh, oh, wow, a balloon of this size 
carrying a payload or as big as three buses could potentially carry a gigantic payload. I mean, why fire rockets that could be tracked by the 450 missiles that we have here when you can just float it over? Especially an EMP. You float an EMP over here in the United States and set off an EMP and knock out all the electricity here, the United States is done. I mean, I mean, we're living in an age where people think that all you do is go to a grocery store to get food, and that it doesn't come from a farm, that it isn't packaged, that it isn't sent by truck or transportation to other, store, to other parts of the country. It just shows up at the store. You just go to the store and you buy it. It's extraordinary what we're living through right now. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to check out the previous video that I will link now up here in the top right-hand corner. You guys can check that out, or I'll link it towards the end of the video. I'll link it earlier in the video uh, to be there in the video for you guys to check out. But nonetheless, this is our follow-up. Find it fascinating, and I will continue to keep an eye on all of this, as I'm sure the CCP is absolutely delighted, and Russia probably equally as delighted by all that is going on. The vulnerabilities that this exposes is absolutely extraordinary. I mean, just all of the things, all the data even if it's a weather balloon, think of all the data and information the Chinese and Russia are gathering from the response of the United States. It's absolutely astounding. Thank you guys for all the support, the likes, the shares, and the comments. I appreciate it as I am putting out lots of content just to be able to stay there in the means of the AI, within the parameters of the AI and the way it works. But unless, guys, I'm going to ramble and I digress. Thank you for the likes, shares, and support. Appearing there on the screen, that would be the channel icon you guys can click on to subscribe to the channel, as well as to get notifications when there is additional content here on the channel. And I'll see all you guys in the next video.